Hi everyone, my name is Dr. David Wank from Shortlist Design, and today I want to talk to you about Zoom. You can navigate to Zoom at zoom.us, and Zoom is a paid video conferencing service. You can use it to video conference with your family, although you might use FaceTime for that since it's free. You could use it for telemedicine, teledentistry, you know, whatever else you need to do. Zoom comes as two features. There is a webinar program and there is a regular meetings program. So for what we need now, we need the pro. I mean, you can certainly here do the free version of it and you can play with the free version. It's limited to 40 minutes in a group meeting. So in theory here, so you could do an unlimited one-to-one -one meeting with the patient or with somebody, and that would be free. If it goes more than 40 minutes though, it's gonna cut you off. I happen to like 15 bucks a month for this version of it, only because it gives you just a little bit more features that you can browse. I'm not gonna bother you with going through all of those. The webinar portion is something totally different. Uh, what a webinar lets you do is basically in, in a regular meeting, in a one-to-one -one meeting, if I have a meeting with you or with you and 10 other people, we're both active participants in the meeting. Whereas in Zoom, whereas in a webinar, you as the visitors, uh, participants are automatically muted and you can't talk until I, you know, open up the, open up the forum, so to speak. So for us, for, you know, you could try it and play it on with the basic, but pro is that good one you can use. Now, in terms of HIPAA, it's 200 bucks a month. And, you know, if it's something that you like here, you can certainly discuss HIPAA with them. For now, this is okay, or the free one is okay, because as far as I can tell, as of right now, this is March 29th, 2020, um, there have been waivers on HIPAA for teledentistry and telemedicine. So that's just something to think about. In terms of signing up, you could sign up, it's free, and, you know, get what you need and play with it and see if you like it. Let's take a look at how we would um, host a meeting. Okay, so let's say we've signed up now, it doesn't matter if it's free or not free version, and let's sign in. So now once we've signed in, it's going to give us a notice, ba 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 ba. Okay, so let's go ahead and schedule a new meeting. And we'll call it, doesn't matter, my meeting, meeting with Dr. David Wank, let's say. Okay, let's come down here, and you can set the date or whatever you want, and the time. Mine is going to allow, you know, a long duration, because I'm on a paid plan. Yours might, you know, limit you to the 40 minutes if you're not on a paid plan. You can set a recurring meeting if you want. You can require people to register. Generally for these meetings, we don't need to have someone register, but you certainly can. And I let it generate a meeting ID automatically. What you could do is you could set an ID and that's like the meeting with me every time, but I'd rather generate it automatically, just easier that way. Require a meeting password, we could turn that off unless you want it. If you're doing it with the patient and you, know, you still have to try and keep HIPAA, what you might wanna do is you know, say, okay, here's the meeting password, Give them the password over text or over the phone. This way, you know, you have a password. Now, uh, host and participant. So I like to set this to default and default as off because sometimes what happens is you, you don't want to turn on a meeting that you, if you know it's going to be a face-to-face -face meeting like with the patient, then certainly keep host video on and off. I like to keep it off because sometimes I don't want to have video on, you know, or sometimes, you know, I haven't shaved. I don't want to have video. And certainly my participants don't want video on unless I've told them. In terms of audio, this is key. So some people don't have a microphone on their computer. Um, you know, most laptops have them built in, but a lot of people don't. So what you can certainly do is this. Telephone means that you can share the screen, but that you have to use the telephone for audio. Computer audio means you can't dial in and both is both. I don't see any advantage for not having both of them. I've been in situations myself on my own meetings where for whatever reason, the microphone isn't working and I call in. So. Enable join before the host, that's fine. That means, it's gonna show you, yeah. So what this means is that, can someone join the meeting before you can? So if you have a 10 a.m. meeting and someone joins at 9.55, when you join the meeting, someone's gonna be waiting there already, which doesn't matter. Enable waiting room, that means there's a waiting room. Only authenticated users can join. Don't worry about that. Now, record them automatically. I like to record my meeting, it just does. Because when I'm doing something with a client, usually it's going to be, hey, here's how we do this. So let's record the meeting. You don't have, well, it looks like, yeah, you don't have to. And then alternative hosts, don't worry about that. Uh, that's if you have, it's, it's on a, you need it for a paid plan. So don't worry about that. So now let's go ahead and save our meeting. And there we go. So now we have our meeting saved and we can invite people. We can click one of these to add it to our calendar. 
you can give somebody this URL and say, okay, I'm going to meet you here. Here's the URL so we can copy it. Or you can click here and copy the invitation. This is great because what you'll see is it's going to tell you, you know, here is the, you know, you could dial this number. So this way people have that information and you can copy it, you know, and then paste it into an email. Again, and here's just reviewing what our settings are, which we did. And you can save this as a template if you want. Don't worry about a poll or live streaming for now. So let's go ahead and you know, here we are. We are, so let's come back to um, the homepage. So now it's, we have a meeting tomorrow at 10. Now it's 10 o'clock. Let's go ahead, you know, it's 10 to 10. Let's host our meeting. Go to my account. Do we have any meetings that are saved? Yes, we do. Oh, look, it's time to start this meeting. So let's go ahead and start the meeting. And you might see this. This is normal the first time you run it. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is Firefox, so depending on what browser you have, it's going to install some software. And once it's done, it's here. Let me show you what we have. And there we go. So now it's installed the software, and here I am in my meeting. Let me minimize this out of the way. And all I have here is you cannot minimize while I'm recording. Okay. So let me come over here. And all that's behind here is my, my blank desktop. So here we are in a meeting. Now let's look at the options that we have in a meeting. So first of all, you can see that it's recording. I'm not going to record this. Let's hit pause. And actually, we can stop the recording. It's going to give me a warning here. It says it's off the screen. The recorder file will con can be converted to an MP4 when this is over. All right. So what can we do in this meeting? Well, if I wanted to mute myself because here are my microphone options and my speaker options, one of the first things I like to do is test it. And so what you do is if you click here, test speaker and microphone, I do hear a ringtone, testing, testing. And that one of my favorite reasons for using this for webinars and everything else is because it lets you test. You're, one of my fears when I'm presenting is that I'm speaking and people can't hear me. So, and I can't hear them to tell me that they can't hear me. Now, when someone would join the meeting, it's going to say, ding, you'll hear a noise, like a ding, ding, ding. It's going to tell you, and then you can let the person in. Usually it's right here. And when they come in though, they're muted. You'd have to click unmute. So now let's say I'm in the middle of this meeting and I wanted to invite my friend to join. You could certainly give them, you know, you could certainly come offline. I mean, not come offline. You can certainly go to your email and forward them that information. But if you don't have it handy, you can click like same thing. This is the same exact button. Invite, and then just went on another screen. You can click copy URL, and now it's copied to the clipboard, and you can paste it into an email, copy invitation, same thing. Now, let's say you wanted to do video. You would click here, and you can, if you have video, you can. it's going to pick which video you want, and you can click here to start video. You can click there to turn off video. Polls we're not going to worry about. Chat, you certainly have chat in here. If you were to click the chat button, you see on the side, let's come over here for a minute. And I can send a message to everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm having trouble with my hardware. Please give me a minute. Thanks. So now you sent a message to everyone who doesn't understand why we're not, you know, how come he's not on. If I wanted to send it to someone privately, you would click here and whoever's name it is, you could, you know, send, you know, this is a private message. And that would be a way to have a private message to someone. I don't like doing that because I feel like if I, you know, slip and forget, I'm going to send it to the wrong person. So you can see, you know, set the, the chat settings. Don't have to worry about that. Now, let's say I had something. Let's talk about sharing the screen now. So I'm going to add something to the screen that I might want to share. Okay, so let's talk about sharing the screen and how that would work. So as of right now, I'm going to pretend that you're the presenter. So you and I are, I'm, I'm the presenter of this meeting, and you're looking over my shoulder to see what we're doing. So now we just started our meeting, and I said hello to everybody, and they said hello back. And what I want to do now is I want to show them this picture of a flex site. So I'm going to move this out of the way, because what I like to have when I'm using Zoom is I do like to have the ability to see this menu. And so you can minimize this and get it out of the way. It's gonna, you know, you're, you're gonna learn to play with the controls where you want them. So this is, these are minimized. We can go like that. So anyway, so let's go ahead now and say, I wanna share the screen. Cause right now 
if you are the participant, you can't see my screen. All they can see is, you know, the Zoom meeting, but they can't see that I have a screen shared. That's why I would say, you know, hi, welcome to our meeting, uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's go ahead and share the screen now. So let me click share. It's going to give me a choice to share a bunch of the screens that I have. So don't worry what you're seeing here. Um, here, what you're seeing here is actually that I'm recording this thing through Camtasia. Don't worry about that. But I do want to share this screen. And now if I click share, you see how it's surrounding it? You can say, let me click share. And now you can see the green around the edge. It's sharing this. So now I can say, hey, everybody. So let's talk about this. You know, um, here's a flex site partial and blah, 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 blah. You can see how it digs into the ginger there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so now I can say, wait a minute, I'd like to show a different picture, but I don't want you to see all of my screen while I'm showing that, while I'm digging through my files to find the other picture. So let me go to my meeting controls, which are hidden up here. What many of you are going to see with Zoom is this top title bar here. For me, it's on a different screen, but you're going to see this gives you all of those same options. So it just depends whether you have it minimized or not and how you arrange your screens. But the information is always the same. So now I've said, I said my piece about this and now I want to show you something else. But again, I don't want you browsing and looking around while I have my, my files open. So uh, I'm going to say, okay, everybody, let me show you a different image. Um, hold on for one second, please. I click stop share. I get this back. So actually I'm going to literally pause now in Camtasia because I don't want you to see my folders either. So I stopped the share and you can see there's no sharing going on. And so let me click off X, but what I'd like to do is pick up a different image. So let me grab a different image. Okay, so now you can see I pulled up an image of a partial on the screen. Now, okay, it's where I want it. I'm ready to share it with my audience. Share. Let me click share and I want to share. Now, I could just share that window, but let me just share my whole screen. It's a little easier to manage. Let me hit share and there we go. So you can see this is back and now I can say, oh, I could even do this. So here is a flexible partial. Here's a cast partial, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and that's it. So we can leave this up and now, okay, I'll take any questions. What else do you think? Yada, yada, yada. And that's my meeting. So now we can stop share. And there you go. So one of the other things you can do while you're sharing is you can annotate. I mean, there are other options here, but these are a little more advanced. So I don't think we have to worry about those for now. But if we were sharing, you could annotate. So someone said, well, can you show me where the um, major connector is? I say, sure. You can come here and you see how like sometimes it'll like disappear on you. You'd be okay. So yes, um, the major connector is going to be right here. You know, here's the major connector, blah, 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 blah. And you know, you want to make sure that let's do, um, we could change the color here. Let's put an arrow. You know, you want to make sure that right here, that's where, you know, it's often overextended and you're going to find that, you know, right in here. And you might have to adjust there when it's delivered because of the undercuts, blah, 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 blah. You know, patients are going to be sore right under there. So you can undo, redo, clear, save it as a picture. But that's certainly something you can do. It's a pretty cool feature. And let's stop the share. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is the invitation URL. And let's minimize these things to get them out of our way. Now, obviously, I am not sharing now with my participants. So let's talk just about the lesson with the meeting URL. Every meeting has to have its own URL. I mean, that's not really true because you can have your personal meeting ID, but it's it suffices to say every new meeting requires a new URL, but every person in a meeting has the same URL. So what that means is if I'm having a meeting today at 10 a.m. with Mrs. Smith, I'm going to create a meeting, Dr. Wank and Mrs. Smith. It's going to have an invitation URL and this URL, I'm going to get, it's mine and I'm going to give it to Mrs. Smith. For my 11 o'clock with Mr. Jones, um, I'm going to have to generate a new meeting and a new meeting will have a new URL. So every meeting has a unique invitation URL, but every person within that meeting gets the same URL. It's not like each of us have a different URL because we're different people. So every meeting is a separate entity with a separate URL. So let's assume now that we're done with our meeting. Let's go ahead now and click, you know, thank you so much. It's been nice having you, blah, 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 end meeting. And so now I could leave the meeting, but if I leave the meeting, you know, you need someone else to be a host. So we're not going to worry about that. So let's end meeting for everybody. And then Zoom is going to start to convert the recording. It's going to ask me for a folder to put it in, but I don't want a recording. This is off screen. You can't see it. I'm hitting cancel. And there we are back to, is it flipping? Because that's where I had the meeting being saved. 
and there you are. So now we've done our first Zoom meeting and you're all set. So please let me know if you have any questions. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can reply in the comments. If you're watching this on Facebook, you can also reply you know, on the thread. Thank you again and have a good day.